Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So here behind me is my 2015 Chef Silverado that's got the 5.3 LS motor with just over 150,000 miles. Unfortunately, the time has come. Uh, a lot of people might know that there is a very common issue with these LS motors and that is the lifters. It is a DOD AFM system which GM introduced for fuel economy and the DOD stands for displacement on demand and the AFM is for active fuel management. When you drive your car switches from eight cylinders to four cylinders and that helps with fuel economy. With those lifters switching on and off it is very prone with these motors that they do go bad. Not all of them but in a lot of cases they do and mine has come. The way I noticed that it, it makes a different noise in the engine. So it either would make a ticking noise or a chirping noise. In my case, it's a chirping noise, which I think I could be wrong. I will see once I open it up is the actual lifter bearing that rolls on the cam, which is chirping on the cam. So I think there might also be damage on the cam. We would only know once we find out, but I do also intend to replace it anyways. So I'm gonna start the truck and let you guys hear what that chirping noise is, which I'm talking about. Hopefully the microphone picks it up, but you guys can hear it almost sounds like a loose belt or something. I initially thought it was the belt, so I changed the tensioner of the belt system and the chirping was still there. So uh, this is, hopefully you guys can hear that chirping. Okay, I'm just quickly gonna go over a couple of parts that you would need in order for their job. So my first goal is to take off the heads. The reason for that is I'm gonna take them to engineering to get them decked, get them flat, and then also I am gonna be replacing the springs. The reason why I'm gonna replace the springs is because I am upgrading the cam. This is a stage one cam, so it's still very stock with a little bit of more torque. You definitely wanna upgrade the valve springs that goes with the cam. The next thing is obviously the main part is the lifter. So I got all brand new lifters that's gonna be replaced, brand new lifter trays. I do have also these block off journals and that is to block off the oil. I got a cam bolt and then also I got this cam phaser, which I'll explain to you guys later when I get to the cam. Got extra bolts. I got a new set of head gaskets and then all my head studs. You can upgrade the studs using ARP studs. I'm gonna keep them stock GM. They're all brand new. That's a one-time use, so I'm replacing all of it. I got my crank bolt which is a, a big one and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna have fun with that. All the seals, water pump, oil seals, thread locker, and then also uh, a sealant RTV. And I'm also changing out the oil pump. So I've got a brand new mailing oil pump. I got all these parts from Guatney Performance. Uh, I'm not associated or sponsor or anything like that. I saw them online and they were very helpful and gave me all these parts. I will need to go to GM and get a couple of more things like the high pressure fuel lines and studs for the exhaust because they are common to break off and I already have a couple that broke off and I haven't even tried to undo them. So another thing that I got that it's going to be helpful is this locking tool for the flywheel. I am going to be needing to lock the engine when I loosen the crank and make sure everything is in place when the car is when the engine is on top dead center. So I got this from Amazon and just like where you remove the starter, you just lock this into the flywheel and your engine won't turn when you undo that crank pulley. So these are all the parts and now it's time to take that engine apart. So I'm gonna show you guys how I get it done. I do have about 20 years of experience working on my own cars. Um, so I think that should be sufficient. I rebuilt one four cylinder motor back in South Africa about 15 years ago. Uh, but I think we'll be just okay. Hopefully you guys like the backdrop here behind me and now it's time to get back into the truck. So I'm gonna start with the easy stuff first and uh, that's gonna be this cold air intake. This little tab, pull out the red one, press and that's it. take off. I'm going to take the belt off with the half inch drive into the tensioner. Now we can uh, disconnect the battery. Next I'm going to remove the alternator. It's got the power connection right there and then two bolts. These bolts do go into the head so I do need to take them out to get the heads off. This is a 13 millimeter 
and wherever I can I put the bolts or the nuts back to where it's supposed to be that way you have least amount of nuts and screws laying around now that we got the top cord off we can go ahead and loosen these two bolts these two bolts 15 millimeters this one in the bottom I believe it's a long bolt that actually screws straight into the head as you guys can see it's a pretty long bolt so before we take this out there is another little clip in the back there so while i'm in here removing this clip i'm gonna also remove this one from the throttle because it is in the same harness so this one got a little tag pull that that the whole thing just comes out you just press it at the back and wiggle it out so now the alternator is ready to come out Okay, alternator is out, pretty tight. So behind the alternator, there is this little bracket that's holding this alternator power line with a little clip on here, but I'm gonna remove this bracket because we need everything clear off the head. So I'm gonna remove this bracket and kind of keep it, try to keep it connected there, but out the way. And this is a 13 millimeter. So I decided to take the bracket off and keep keep it together with the screw because i think it's going to be in the way later down the line so. next i'm going to remove this intake before i do that i am going to remove all these coil packs where it's connected on both sides you flick up the red tap and then it should come right off do that with all eight on both sides I'll take off this hose. This one on top here, it's got a little blue tab. You have to push out to the right and then you can press it down and pull it out. And there's another clip here by the water thermostat. Press that and pull it up. So we got almost all the wiring harness loose. There's a cup, there's two more underneath here, one with the red one with the little red tab, same as this. Just gotta push that red tab out. And then it comes off. Now I'm gonna remove this intake loosen this wiring harness. Something that is not standard on these LS engines is an oil catch can, which is also very highly recommended. Um, it definitely helps this engine's longevity. Um, so yeah, it's got two breather lines that need to disconnect over here and then one right next to the intake. So I'm gonna remove that and get them out the way. Now there's another little clip that's part of the harness over here. So we're just gonna remove that clip. So this intake's hold on with uh, 10 millimeters. Okay, now the other side. I think the whole intake is loose. The only thing holding me back is this little clip that I can't seem to get loose. And I'm trying my best not to break it. Got it. Just gotta change the angle. Angle of the dangle. Okay, now let's see if this intake will come off. Oh, there's another bolt in the very, very back. It's gonna be a hard one. Just wanna show you guys where this is. Uh, let's see. So there at the very back, I've got my ratchet locked in and it's there in the very back so let's get cranking it is pretty tight but uh, it's not too bad let's uh let's see if this intake will come off okay so the intake is loose however this uh, main wiring harness for some reason is connected at the very back at the intake so uh, let's see if i can get it off Okay, got it. Now, uh, 
should come right out. Woo! Great success. Okay, so we got that intake manifold off and uh, so far we are making good progress. The next few things is going to be to remove those high pressure fuel lines and then I need to go on the side, remove the plugs and then the exhaust manifolds. So that's going to be in the next few steps. Before I get to that, I'm going to drain the coolants and then the, also the oil. So uh, let's get to it. Now I'm going to drain the coolant. I got a funnel over there and that will go to this bowl over here coming out right there. So hopefully uh, we can catch as much as possible. So let's see. That wasn't too bad. And I'm going to leave this hose on and it will come off when I take off the water pump later on. Next I'm going to remove the plug wires and the plugs. So we can have some space to get to the exhaust manifold. I'm going to have to remove the steering rack to make a little bit of space. So there is a factory marking on there and I'm just going to make extra markings on both sides before I remove the steering rack. So there, there you guys can see I made a marking on the top and at the bottom and I'm just going to take out the center piece. Bit. Next we're going to loosen the exhaust manifold studs. Uh, these are prone to rust and break off. I am not going to try to save them. I am taking the head to the engineering so they said they can replace them. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all the studs with new studs. So I'm just going to go ahead, loosen them and see how many I can save or how many it's going to break off. First one came out pretty good. Oh, that one feels tight. I think it might break. Oh, it got loose. I feel like we got a little lucky. And then you also want to loosen up the dipstick and that's going to be a T40 Torx. So I had a little bit of a hard time getting to those rear bolts from the exhaust manifold. So what I did was I removed the wheel and removed the inner wheel well or the inner fender. And uh, now I've got a lot more access to that uh, bolts and it should be a lot easier to get out. And also I need to loosen the exhaust right there to get the manifold out. So that'll also help me to get a little bit easier access to it. Okay guys, I finally got the last bolt of that exhaust manifold out and this is the extension I had to use to get all the way through it. Access is very limited, so I feel like that's gonna be the hardest part of this uh, whole project. That last bolt of the exhaust manifold, but uh, however I got it out, now I just need to loosen it at the exhaust and that's three studs and it should be out and ready to go. Okay guys, after a long struggle, uh, I finally got the exhaust manifold loose from the head and also from the exhaust. Uh, I would definitely recommend uh, lubricate those, spray them with DW40 or rust penetrator or whatever you think works, um, maybe a week or two in advance and uh, get those things loose. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna struggle like me. So just wanna prevent somebody else from uh, struggling the way I did. So let's see if it'll come out. No manifold. Okay, the next step is going to be to start removing these high pressure fuel lines. So there is a couple of clips that we have to like loosen and then also wear safety glasses because there is high pressure fuel that might squirt out. So definitely on the safety side, you definitely want to wear some safety glasses before you loosen that. And then before we take out that high pressure fuel pump, we want to make sure that the car is on top dead center. So I use this little uh, camera and I made sure the piston is all the way on top that is piston number one that'll be this first one right there um, and I so I got my camera in there and I got my piston all the way to the top made sure it's top dead center the reason for that there's a spring in there and if it's not top dead center it could damage that fuel pump so uh, I'm gonna go ahead start removing some clips and try to get out those fuel lines I've got the little red tabs we'll push back We're using this pipe wrench, it's 17 over there, but I'm also gonna have this rack covered because there might still be high pressure fuel in there, so just to be safe. That one's loose, now this one. It's 
one line out. How's this one? And then it's got a 10 millimeter right there. And that is the second eye pressure fill line. In order for this fill line to come out, we have to loosen this bracket. So that way this line has got some movement in it. And that's a 10 millimeter bolt. There we go. Now we can remove our high pressure fuel pump. So you want to take this out evenly, so the same amount of turns on each side, so it comes out evenly, because there is a spring in there and you do not want to damage that spring. 13 millimeter, so we're gonna do go back and forth on the same amount of turns each time. One, two, three, one, two, three. And there it is. So you definitely want to close that off once this is out to make sure nothing falls into it. So a lot of people would cover up this intake. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. Mine is however gonna go to engineering. So they are gonna clean up the heads completely. So I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, however, if you do not take your heads to engineering, I would highly recommend to cover it up so nothing gets into it. Like all this dust when you take off this valley cover. And by the looks of it, it looks like this injector at the back was leaking. Uh, or something over here was leaking. I'm not sure if it's the injector itself. I will probably figure it out once I take these fuel rails off. Uh, however, I always did have a smell of gas after I had my truck at an auto shop for injector replacement. So, yeah. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. So while I'm up here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this valve cover gasket and it got a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. I decided to remove the injector harness on both sides. That way it's easier for a pry bar to go underneath it. And I would say definitely take your time when you remove this fuel rail, it can bend very easily. So as you guys can see, the fuel rail is out with the injectors. And uh, as you guys can see, compare these three front injectors to the last one where I presumed it was leaking of some sorts. And uh, it went to the auto shop to replace all four cylinders on this bank. Uh, but to be honest, it looks like three was replaced and that one was not replaced. So uh, I'm not really sure what the deal is. So I'll definitely replace that injector and get a new one in there because it doesn't look it looks not great i don't know how to describe it but it's definitely not not what i not what i like to see before i removed these rocker arms i rotated the engine to make sure these valve springs are all the way to the top and there's no tension on them that way it's a lot easier and safer to remove the rocker arms. This is very important to make sure they stay together in sequence. Um, you do not want to mess that up. Now that we got the rockers off, we are ready to remove the head. So it's got these bolts, it's 15 millimeters. However, it does also have a hexagon bolt in there that is a 13 millimeter. So I'm gonna start here with the ones on the outside, then over there, a little bit inside, 
then those, and then the last ones. And so it's evenly. So I'm just gonna basically do a mirror reverse the way you would tighten it, the tightening sequence, just by loosening it and make sure it loosens up evenly. So the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do them all 90 degrees. 90 degrees, and then I'm gonna come back and do them all 180 degrees, and that way it will loosen up evenly. Before you can remove the heads, there is a ground wire connected there with a 13 millimeter. And also on the other head, there is another ground wire that's connected there with a 13 millimeter. So this is also ground connected to the head, but it's easier to remove it up here than to remove it at the back of the head and you can just remove it afterwards. Okay guys, so we got the one head off and now it's time for the second head. I'm gonna do my best to get it off without removing this bracket. With this bracket, I have to remove the AC pump and uh, I'm gonna do my best so it can go off without removing it. If I have to remove it, then I'll just keep uh, tearing it down. For now, I'm gonna remove this valve cover with a couple of 10 millimeter bolts and uh, let's keep on going. With this valve cover, there is a bolt in the very back uh, which is hard to see and reach but uh, just want to show you guys it was hard for me to see once i climbed into the engine bay i could figure it out so uh, it's another thing there that's hiding away so we got the bolt in the very back there and uh, i think this cover is ready to come off so let's see all right now again, before we remove these rockers, we wanna make sure the tension is off them. So you wanna rotate your crank so the rocker is all the way in the up position. That way there's no tension on the spring. And uh, we'll just rotate the, and we'll also use a 24 socket to rotate that crank. So the first two is all the way to the top and we can take them out. And these rockers use an eight millimeter. And again, if you're gonna reuse this, you wanna make sure you keep it together. Okay guys, it's that time again to loosen those head bolts. They are pretty tight, so I'm gonna do my best to work from the outside in and then just evenly loosen them all the way through. So uh, I'm gonna start with the hardest one and that's gonna be the one in the back. Um, I would definitely say if you have the shop or you know somebody with a shop uh, that you can remove the engine, that is definitely a lot easier to work on this engine. It is very tight in the back end of the spaces. So if you uh, plan to do this work, uh, just prepare for it. There are tight spaces and hopefully you've got small hands and uh, you'll be able to climb in this engine because that's definitely needed. Again, these head bolts are 15 millimeter. Once um, I would just also like to point out this inside head bolt is a actual hexagon bolt, not an Allen wrench like on that side. So uh, just be aware of that. I'm not sure why they use an Allen bolt on that side. Uh, I am going to try to figure that out. Uh, however, it's only on one side, so let's get these bolts loose, or try at least. Okay, so I got the cylinder head loose and now it's time for it to come out. I got a little scraper, I'm going to try to separate the head gasket from the head, because on this side it was holding me back, it kind of like sticks to the block. Um, so I'm gonna try to lift it up and loosen the head gasket. That way I think it might be a little bit easier coming off. So uh, let's see what happens. I don't know if that's gonna work. It is that head gasket that's holding it uh, a little bit back. So I uh, might have to just try to yank it out. out and as you guys can see the, the head gasket is the thing that's uh, kind of making it hard to get out so it's on there pretty good and we're out 
Uh, good thing we're replacing it. Pretty crazy head gasket. My Delpin, so we want to save that. So this helps to guide the cylinder head back into the block. So you definitely want to hold on to that. So just to let you guys know, on the passenger side, I kept the manifold in, I just loosened it from the cylinder head and this uh, alternator bracket I also didn't have to remove and there was enough space for the head to come right off. So now that the head is off, we got access to the lifters and we can take them out and see which one was giving us a chirping noise. I have to say, the, the pistons actually looks pretty good. There is not a lot of carbon. Uh, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try my best to clean them up, just basically wipe them off. Uh, just wipe out the cylinders and uh, we should be good. I'm gonna clean up the surface for the head gasket, um, but I'll show you guys that in a, probably in the next video or so. Okay, so the lifter trays are hold on with a 10 millimeter. Now when I pull this out, I believe two of the lifters would come out and two will stay in. So let's see. This one definitely got some wear on it. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys the main reason why we actually had to rip this motor apart is these lifters. So these are the solid lifters and these are the DOD lifters. And I'm going to show you guys the reason for that chirping. So if you look at this roller bearing, this is where it like rolls on the cam. And these solid lifters look pretty good. So there's no marks or anything. There is a small little line on this one, so it's got a little bit of wear. And then let me show you guys these ones. So there is a little bit of wear on this left side of that roller. And chances are if there's a little bit of damage on this, you're gonna have the same on your cam. And then the main one, I think where the biggest problem was, this is pretty obvious. So you guys can see the wear on that roller bearing and it's just all the way through. And then also if you give it a shake, you can hear, it's not supposed to do that. Here's the other side, which was not noisy at all. They are clean, there's not really any marks on them. So uh, yeah, these were all good. These are the, the ones in the back. So that's gonna be cylinder eight and six. And then these are the front in the front, which is gonna be two and four. So, and I presume the ones on the driver's side should be good because there was no noise coming from them. I think the main reason is these bad boys. Okay, and these are the driver's side lifters. Although there wasn't any noise coming from the driver's side, there are signs of wear on these rollers as well. As you guys can see slightly, there's a little line on that one. And this one over here has got a line. And that is a sign of wear. So it won't be long until I would have heard something from the driver's side as well. That one looks good, that looks good. This one also got like a little bit of lines, faint lines, I don't know if the camera will see it. But there are signs of wear, so it would have been only a matter of time till this side would also start uh, making some noise. And you definitely do not want to drive a lot of miles when you hear noise. Any ticking noise, I think it might be catastrophic and you definitely want to avoid that. So I think I did it in the right time and uh, let's keep on going. I just want to show you guys how I organized it. Um, so this is the metal. This is my obviously the intake. This is the passenger side where I got all my rockers and then the lifters. I obviously going to replace them, my fuel rails. And then also again on the on the driver's side, got my lifters with all the rockers. Okay guys, I am super happy with the progress I made up until this point. My goal was to remove the cylinder head and get to these lifters and see what the root cause of this noise issue is. And I think we found it. A couple of takeaways that I want to share with you guys. It took me about a week to get to this point. I have to say I had to go to the parts store probably two, three times a day in between recording and doing some work. 
Uh, the reason for that is I don't swing wrenches every day. I would like to. Uh, however, I do not have a full workshop with all the tools necessary. And I do not know what tools I would need until I need them. So it's almost the same as uh, you don't know what you don't know. So uh, I figured it out every time I needed a tool, I run to the parts store, come back. So it definitely made the process a little bit longer. If you have everything, you can probably take everything apart a day or two. If you are an experienced mechanic, you can probably get this done within a day. If you're a DIYer like me and you have all the tools, probably take you about two days. Uh, I have to say, it will be a lot easier if you are able to remove the engine completely and then work on it. However, the hardest part I would say is on the driver's side. Um, and then obviously in the back. In the back end, there's like a lot of bolts and things that is hard to get to, which made it a little bit harder and uh, time consuming. And then in the beginning, all the clips that's never been unclipped, it definitely wore out my fingertips. Um, that was not that I would say that was the least fun part of this whole process. This is gonna be a three part series video of rebuilding this motor. So we got to the heads. The next part is gonna be removing the belt drive, fan, radiator, everything to get to the cam. And then the last part would be the assembly of the motor altogether. So let me know what you guys think of this whole project. Am I crazy doing this or very optimistic? I would say it's definitely a learning journey for me, and I do enjoy uh, swinging some wrenches around. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to see part two, part three, keep up with my process and uh, learning experience. Hopefully some of you can learn something along the way as well. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Until next time, goodbye. So my goal is, uh, is that's got the 5.3 Alice motor with 100, the flywheel pulleys. And when you, when you undo the flywheel, not the flywheel pulley, couple of takeaways from this couple a couple of takeaways from a couple of takeaways to get to this point it'll probably take you about i would say you can probably yeah, somebody decided to uh start cutting down a tree <laughs>